All right, hello. My name is Tiffany. Welcome back to another video. This video, I'm going to be going over how I coded my music quiz app. So I'm very excited. I'll be going over the code with you all so you can kind of get a better look. Some design stuff that I did. I'm not a designer, so it's trash. But yeah, I decided to start coding on the front end of this stuff first, just because I was not good at the front end stuff and I wanted to get it over with. So, um, and I'm also using Livewire, Total Tech Stack, Livewire on the front end, Laravel on the back end, and um, it's minimal back end. A lot of this is gonna be front end stuff. So very excited to dig in with you all. Let's give a quick demo. This is the Music Quiz game. You could test it out if you'd like to. This is the start page, so start the game. You click to hear the preview, you make an option, and you submit the answer, and then you continuously do this process. Okay, and then you get to the end of a set of five questions and you have a game over screen, it tells you your score, asks you if you wanna start again, or if you wanna keep playing. So that is the main gist of it. In terms of the, the design for it, as you can see, I have right here, I have the design, it looks, nothing like <laughs> what it looks like now. Um, when I made this, it was just a rough outline to get myself started. Obviously it changed. So in terms of the code, so let's start with the start page and I'll kind of do a side by side. On the start page, um, I have a web route here that goes to the slash start page, as you can tell by this URL that I've shortened, but there it goes, slash start. Um, and this goes to the start class, which is here. In this component, all that happens is there are basically um, the, the count, the score, and um, the song is being set once the game has officially started. But currently, it just renders a view called start. If you just were to like go on this page, all that happens is it renders this view called start, which looks like this. So as you can see, it says music quiz game. That's what it says here. Um, and then the instructions are here. The important piece of this is the start game button because we have a um, wire click here, which essentially says, hey, when you click on this, go to this method. And essentially that method is start game. So back in the start class, we have a start game method here. And this is where the song actually gets set. We're starting out with the first song every single time because there's always going to be a first song in the database the way that I've configured the back end, as we'll see in a moment. And then we're gonna shuffle the, cho the song choices because we wanna make sure that when people are using this, they get different orders for the songs and they're not always the same. And then this saves, and this is just when you click this button. What happens after you save the song, you're being redirected to a route called um, song list. Now in the song list, as you can see, it takes in the song count and the score, and it goes to the song list class, which we'll close these out because we're done with those. So in the song list class, we have a new method here called um, mount and in mount this is similar to what a constructor does on the back end in which when this class is called it is expecting these parameters to come through and an action is being taken on those parameters and in this case I'm just setting those as song count and score respectively and then after that again from the start page we've set the first song and the count and the score and then we're gonna ignore the rest of that for now because all that happens is the show post is rendered with the song data, um, which is this. So this shows you with the song ID, this has the preview. So essentially when you click this button, this is the first song, this is the preview, the choices. So you have that and then here are the choices here. And then you have the selected song answer as well. Going back up here, Wire Model Live 
basically keeps track of what song name was clicked on and that is your like selected choice. So we have that value and we're able to save that value and use that value in the song list class. And it's also being displayed here. So if you click on this one, selected song answer and the song choice shows here. The other piece of this is very important. It's a submit button. So there's a wire click action on it. It's a, uh, as you see here, it's a method called submit and I'm passing into it the song ID. That method is here. And inside here, as you see, I have that song ID. I could have passed in the song. I could have done this in many ways, but I've chose to do it this way. Um, and right here off the bat, I'm checking to see if the selected song choice from the user matches the answer that's based on what this song is. If so, I'm incrementing the variable, the score for this one. And then I'm also resetting some values here. This is gonna clear the radio buttons. This is gonna clear the song choice. Uh, or the selected choice rather. And then I'm incrementing the song ID to be used for the next song ID. And I'm incrementing the count. This count becomes important because it's how I keep track of how many songs are in the database here versus which number that we're on. And in this case, I guess, which round that we're on. And so that kind of gives me something to uh, figure out where we are at in this process. So I check to see if we've reached the end and if not, um, and this is a multiple of five because I'm only doing a set of five songs per, I guess, section of songs. And I did that to kind of give the user a break if they didn't want to click through the entire 36 songs that are on the list they could kind of click away after five songs and kind of restart the game or cont continue to keep going if they choose to do so. Then we are finding the song based on that song ID that we've incremented here. Um, and we're gonna shuffle the song choices again, save them, and then we're gonna dispatch an event called new song, which we'll talk about in a second. And this takes in the song and the score. Once the event is dispatched, I've, uh, on this method, it's called the um, update song and it knows it's connected by that event based on the event name, which is new song. So in this method, I've basically reset the score and the song. And then if none of that happens, then I find the, um, the next song and I'm setting the next song so that I can prepare the end user for the end of the game. So this is important when you are at the multiple of five and the end game screen shows. So for example, if I just got to go through here for a second, really quickly, I know I'm getting some of these wrong on purpose. <laughs> okay. So basically this screen uh, is what this end game is. Also in the show post method, I'm going to pause for a second and quickly talk about the show post method. Um, again, I mean, show post and, and talk about the, the, the script tag I have in here. Essentially what this is doing is it's, I have the audio coming in, um, here, and then I have a button for the preview and I wanted to kind of disable the preview button and then have the audio showing or have the audio playing and then not have that user to be able to click on it while the audio is playing, as you can see here. So you can't click on this. And after the preview is over, you're not able to click, you're not able to click on it. So all of that action is happening within here amongst clicking song choices and previews. And then as far as the preview itself, um, down here, there's, uh, I've set the end, pre end preview for five, which is in my time, five seconds. So I've added an event listener that, that updates the time, um, from that event. And it's basically trying to say, Hey, as long as, you know, if this is greater than the preview, 
then pause the audio. So that's how the audio is being paused. The rest of this just has to do with the button showing and hiding on its own. And so that's all for the show post. And then we have the end game. So that's what I mentioned before. We are going to talk about that now. It takes in the song count and the score. The end game class just looks like this. And it also has a mount function. And in this mount function, we're taking in the song count and the score, as I mentioned, and we're setting those values. Um, and it's going to go down here and render this end game view with the song count and score as you can see here and it'll take you to this screen which has the game over the score and how many points the person has out of the amount of songs that they listen to this portion is um, probably the most important piece of this because what this is doing is it's saying is the count of song that we're on is equal to the song id that we're currently at and that basically means hey are we at the end have we reached the end of the songs because if you did then i display a message for you and i have this button with a click action of um restart again and it says start again otherwise if we haven't reached the end um, I still have the restart again button if you want to start from the beginning or I also have another option where you can continue to keep playing. So let's go over those two methods. So for the click for restart again, what it looks like, this is in the in-game class. Uh, basically it's very simple. It just redirects you back to the start page. Everything gets reset and you start again, essentially. And then the other part, is the keep playing in this it takes in the song count and the score um here and it's basically setting those values and then passing those along to the song list and the song list if you can remember uh it, what it's going to do is it's going to load those values so the player can continue to keep their score and I can continue to track what count they're on so I know when they've reached the end. And so um, the song displays, so it's the next song that's being um, displayed there. So that's pretty much the front end of it. As far as the back end is concerned, I have um, one route that shows the, um, that will actually load all these songs. And Inside of the songs controller, I have a constructor, which um, for this one also had to mention, I used a package to bring in Spotify rather than me making direct um, requests to the server. So I'm pulling in that uh, third party package right here. And then I'm setting a session, which I have these variables hidden in my config files. And then I'm getting the current um, requesting a token and I'm setting the session. So after all that's done, how I'm always able to start with song number one is because I'm deleting the entire database. This isn't ideal to like truncate your entire database. I wanted to be able to, to delete them so I wouldn't have to keep track of, have I added this already and et cetera. Uh, so that's deleting everything. Uh, and then what I do is I call um, the get playlist method and I pass in the playlist ID and the market. Now, after it goes to Spotify, get the playlist information, I now have access to song tracks. And so I set those as a, uh, in a collection for all the track, uh, all the tracks in the playlist. And then I shuffle that playlist so they're, added in different orders and they're not the same order that is on the current playlist. Then I'm going through each of those songs and I'm going to go and create those songs. And that is this method here. I get the track ID and then I go in and after I get the track ID, I go ahead and check to see if the songs are empty. Like, I mean, sorry, if the song exists, this functionality was mainly before I tried it, before I started deleting everything. I wanted to make sure this, the song didn't exist and I didn't add it already. 
but it's less important now. Um, but I still kept it in there just in case. And then I have the, I grabbed the preview URL. Um, and then I also check, I'm like, Hey, does the preview URL exist? If not, we we need to kill this because I can't do anything. If a song does not have a preview URL, that's kind of the basis of the whole thing. Um, I grabbed the artists and I set the artist name and the ID for each one of these. These are important so I can get random song choices from the Spotify API. And I also save the answer of the um, song by getting the track name. So inside of the um, random song choices method is right here. I pass in the artist IDs, the track ID, and it returns to me an array. So basically what I've decided to do, I was having a lot of issues from the song recommendations on Spotify. So what I ended up doing is saying, hey, let's just set a cache so that it'll remember the request for a certain amount of time, in this case, six hours. And then I don't have to come up with a bunch of failed errors from Spotify that says, hey, you've done too many requests. So that worked out great. Um, I set a cache key for it, uh, which is based on the artist and the track ID. So it's always um, something unique. And then I call the recommendations method from Spotify. And I say, hey, just give me three songs because I've got the answer and I just need three other ones. Uh, and then I set the market for the US market, use those artist IDs and track uh, ID so it can give me similar songs and then I'm catching any exceptions that come through right now It's just logging it for me here, which was super helpful helpful when I was debugging And this is also a debug statement that I kind of left in there as I was debugging too um, And then I'm going through each of the recommended song tracks and I'm just saving them as a song list recommendation or recommended song list variable that's an array and I just return that array which is here. And then in that same array, I go ahead and add answer to it. Remember my answer is up here. So I add that to the array and then I, um, I shuffle the array. Um, and then this is the actual part where I'm saving the song. So I have a song model, which is here, and this is a very small model. All it's doing is casting choices to an array. That's it. And um, I'm saving the track ID the artist name, um, preview URL, answer the choices, and I'm hitting the save button right here and returning true once all that is completed. I also included testing in here. I tested the views and just to make sure that they showed data and I will actually go into testing in another video, but I really just wanted to talk about how this was working in this video. So hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.